and welcome to our Community College Connection Part 2. We are so sincerely excited to have you with us this morning to bring you the latest updates and to have you here as partners. My name is Mackenzie Dowling and I am an admissions advisor with undergraduate admissions here at Oakland University. We hope that you leave this morning with not only a wealth of knowledge about Oakland University, but also having virtually met a few colleagues and OU staff members as well. This year, we are very proud that our average incoming transfer student had a cumulative GPA of a 3.2. For this, our application for admission is free online at oakland.edu slash apply, and we require that students submit official transcripts from any and all institutions that they've attended since high school. However, we do want to say that generally transfer students with a 2.5 cumulative grade point average or higher are admitted, as well as it's important to note that transfer students who have earned an associate's degree and have a minimum of a 2.0 cumulative GPA are generally also considered for admission. When we're thinking about some of our transfer students who maybe haven't quite hit that 24 credit mark um, they, may also, they may also apply to be transfer students at OU. They just must also provide our office with official high school transcripts. In this case, they're considered for admission based both on their college and high school work. And we would want and need to see a minimum GPA of a 2.5 cumulative GPA from both their high school and their college transcripts. If students are interested in taking a tour of our campus, which we strongly encourage, we're offering virtual tours daily and on most weekdays. We offer several academic visit days throughout the years in areas of education, music, theater, and dance, engineering, business, health science, and nursing, which are on various dates throughout the year. Students can find these dates and times for all of the events that we offer, as well as register to attend online by visiting oakland.edu slash visit. Yet another program that we offer for our amazing transfer students is called Transfer Tuesdays. In this event, students meet individually with an admissions advisor and may receive an immediate admissions decision. This event is very similar to our transfer student information session, except it does not include the academic and student services fair. Now we're going to talk a little bit about scholarships for our transfer students. Scholarship consideration at OU is automatic, which means that there is only one application for both admissions and scholarships. Transfer students who wish to be considered for our merit-based scholarships should apply by December 1st if they are interested in beginning with us in our winter semester, July 1st if they're interested in beginning with us in our summer semester, or August 1st if they're choosing to begin with us in our fall semester. Transfer scholarship consideration is based upon the student's cumulative grade point average at their time of admission. And it's important to note that to be eligible for our transfer scholarships, Transfer students must have earned a minimum of 24 transferable credits prior to the scholarship deadline. Here at OU, we offer several automatic scholarships for students transferring for both, from both community college and four-year universities. One of our newer scholarships that we like to highlight is our Presidential Transfer Award. Um, these awards, as you can see on the screen, start at $1,000 and go up to $5,000 per year. And again, as we said, students are automatically considered for these scholarships at time of admission, and they are based, as you can see on the screen, on cumulative GPA and number of credits. Now, I'd like to take a moment to have the team members in undergraduate admissions and introduce themselves and share their geographic recruitment territory with you all this morning. All right. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sharice Lucas-Perry. I'm a senior recruitment advisor and I recruit in Macomb County. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Adima Abbott. I'm one of the admissions advisors at Oakland. I work specifically with students in uh, Livingston, Monroe, Washtenaw, and Lenawee County. Uh, so that's Washtenaw Community College and Monroe County Community College. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jeffrey Carl. I'm also one of the admissions advisors here at Undergraduate Admissions. Uh, I recruit at Delta Community College, Mott Community College, as well as SC4. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, everyone. Good morning. My name is Hope Daco. I'm a senior recruitment advisor. I recruit in Oakland and Wayne counties. And then also my partner there on the screen, Ruthie Paula, she also recruits in Oakland County with me as well. So uh, we are going to cover OCC, all of the different locations there, and then I also cover Schoolcraft College. 
Hello everyone, my name is Brittany Thomas. I am a senior recruitment advisor in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. I recruit in Wayne County and I specifically serve the community colleges, Henry Ford College, Wayne County Community College, their Down River Campus and the Ted Scott Campus. Me again, you already know me, but my name is Mackenzie Dowling and I recruit in Northern Michigan. So anything on the screen that you see in gold, so any community colleges up there, I partner with. Well, hi everyone. My name is Adam Penchenko. I'm a senior recruitment advisor and you'll see me uh, floating around Macomb County with uh, Sharice. Good morning, everyone. My name is Drew Huff. I am also an admissions advisor <coughs> in the Southwest Michigan area. So that's gonna include Jackson College, Lansing Community College, Kellogg Community College, uh, and a few others as well. So thanks for being with us this morning. And last but certainly not least, me again, but I am speaking on behalf of Kayla Jones, who is one of our other admissions advisors. She's experiencing some technical difficulties, but she is my partner in the Wayne County area. She recruits at the um, Wayne County Community College campuses of downtown. Eastern Campus, Northwest Campus, and the University Center. Now I would like to introduce Matt Zeig, the Transfer Articulation Coordinator in the Office of the Registrar, and hand it over to him. Thank you, Mackenzie. I won't take too much of your time. I know uh, the good information is after me. I just want to highlight a few things. Um, if you were able to attend part one, some of this is going to be rehashed, but if you weren't, just want to highlight a couple of policies, uh, things that will be good to know. And if you ever need follow-up, you can always contact myself. Uh, my team also consists of John Sebelak and Melody Osborne, who are my transfer articulation specialists. We maintain about 1,400 transfer guides for our community college partners. Uh, but a few things I want to just cover real quick is we are participating in the Michigan Pathways Project. Uh, there are 10 pathways, and we are participating in nine. The only one we are not participating in is public health because we do not have a bachelor degree in public health. Um, if your students are following the pathways and decide on OU, it is strongly recommended that you then transition over to our transfer guides because there will be more detailed information regarding that. Um, next up is residency. Recently, we changed our residency policy before it was you needed to complete 32 credits at Oakland University and community colleges could transfer over a maximum of half the degree. So typically that's falling in the 62 to 64 credit range. That has now changed. Our residency now is 45 credits at OU, and now we don't cap the amount of community college credits that you can transfer. Obviously, we're not going to sit here and have students transfer 120 credits. Yes, they'll all come in, but they won't all apply. Uh, so the benefit of that is students now can stay at the community college a little bit longer um, and save some money by taking uh, courses uh, with you longer. So maybe it's completing MTA, maybe it's completing a different requirement that they didn't realize they could. Uh, and that way it won't, we won't have to play the game that I always explained before of let's remove something and add this and then it can kind of get a little bit confusing. So again, uh, more transfer friendly residency policy. So uh, if you have any questions on that, definitely contact me. Uh, two other quick things before I kick it over to College of Arts and Sciences is we now are uh, accepting the DSST exam. Uh, this is a new development for us. We're almost done with our faculty evaluation. So if you have students who take that exam from our research, we haven't seen many four-year partners uh, offering equivalencies for those exams. Uh, we do now, and I will tell you a very shock, shocking thing is we accept a lot of direct equivalencies. It was really great, especially business. Uh, we're accepting a lot of direct equivalencies. So if you have students who are taking these exams, definitely look towards OU because they can continue on and still get the same credit. And then the last thing I want to highlight is, uh, you know, twice a year we send out a newsletter. Uh, we try to Make sure we stay in contact with you throughout the year so it's not just once a year at uh, these events. Um, just little informational little tidbits here and there. We have one coming out in a few weeks, so definitely encourage you to open it, um, see what it's about. Uh, let us know if there's ever, ever information you wish we had, if you wanted us to include more information. We try to keep it short and sweet because we know you probably get a lot of these from other institutions and have a busy day with your students. So at this time, we would like to transition to our academic updates presentation. Please join me in welcoming the Director of Advising Services for the College of Arts and Sciences, who is going to speak to you a little bit about the major offerings in the College of Arts and Sciences. The College of Arts and Sciences at Oakland University is um, somewhat unique in that we have all of the bench sciences and math, all of the social sciences, humanities, but we also have all of the fine and performing arts as well as secondary education that we share with school events. So 
We are a very large college that covers a lot of different subject areas. The way that you can see kind of all of the programs that are offered in the college is by coming to our website. So on the majors tab, and this honestly is the number one tool for our prospective students. It's going to give you um, all of the information on how courses should be taken and what's required for the major. If you have uh, used this in the past, you may have noticed that the layout changed. So we have moved things around a little bit. It used to be that you could click on the major title and go to the department website <clears throat> and then click on the sample schedule link to see the four-year plan. Um, we've now changed that to group the majors by department. So you'll see here, psychology is the department. If you click on the word psychology, it'll take you to the department website. Under that, you're gonna see the majors offered by psychology. This lists both the BA plus the four plus one, so the undergrad to grad program, and the three plus three, which is the, the BA to law degree program. So this outlines for the students what that four-year plan looks like for each of those majors and then listing the next department. So that, that majors tab on our website looks slightly different. Um, it's not alphabetical, so that might confuse a few people. It is by department. So take your time, make sure you're looking, um, find what you're looking for, and if you have any questions, uh, let us know. Um, the four-year plans are really what we're encouraging students to use if they know they're coming to Oakland. So Matt had talked about the transfer guides which are great. They give the course to course equivalency of what they can take at the community college. We really want the students using the four year plans to kind of put the courses together in terms of what they should be taking when. Why that's really important is let's say they're a history student or an English student and they take all of the courses that they can take at the community college in the first two years, they complete all their gen eds and then they transfer to Oakland. They're gonna be making that transition from the community college to the four-year school and going directly into 3000 level history and English courses that require quite a bit of reading, quite a bit of writing, and, and they have no balance. I mean, they're basically gonna be taking two or three upper level history classes with some additional content that maybe they need for a minor or something else. There's, there's no balance that we can give them. And so these sample schedules are really all about trying to give students balance, trying to give them you know, a general education course along with um, you know, a major course that might be a heavy content course. Um, our science students get really knocked by this. They, they transition over and they have to take you know, a semester full of 3000 level biology classes. Um, so really helping students follow these four-year plans to the best of their ability with what they're taking at the community college will help them be successful when they transition to the four-year school also. So this is just an example of what those plans look like. Um, these will be visually changing slightly here in the next few weeks, um, but the content will be the same. It lists the courses, the minimum grades, um, the prereqs, or any kind of specific notes on those courses that students need to know. Um, in terms of whether they're transferring it or taking it here, that minimum grade is going to apply. So one of the things that we added in the college in the last couple of years is the CIS Advantage. And so this is how we're talking to students pursuing liberal arts degrees about the skills and the knowledge that they're gaining as part of that undergraduate degree experience. Um, these are skills and what sometimes people are called soft skills or transitional skills that employers are looking for but also what makes Oakland University students um, contributing members of our global society. So things like ethics, um, you know, listening, leadership. These are things that we're pointing out to students and helping them kind of track during the four years or their undergraduate experience that they can then recall later as they're applying to internships, job interviews, um, grad school, helping them really identify those skills be able to reflect on how they've learned or applied those skills, and then having a place to keep them so that when they go to that next level, they can reflect on them, pull them up quickly, add them to their resume, and use them to move forward. Um, this is something that we're integrating into our advising and more and more into our classrooms. The faculty are identifying for students, hey, this project is really gonna be raising your critical thinking and problem solving flag. So we really see this as an added benefit for students attending um, 
the College of Arts and Sciences at Oakland University. So what's new for next year? Um, a lot, actually. <laughs> We've added several minors. So these are things that we're continuing to see students um, pursuing and have been kind of putting together on their own or with faculty or advising help. Um, but we're really formalizing them at this point. So speech language pathology minor, that's a big one that we see frequently. Um, a GIS minor, this is huge. If you um, watch the Discovery Channel or anything, you've seen lots of things with this new technology and, and what they're finding. So having a GIS minor with specific classes um, shared across <clears throat> different disciplines. Uh, health communications, again, <clears throat> a share between the college and school of health science and then an additional philosophy minor. I also wanted to add, we've made a couple changes to some existing degrees. Um, our social studies endorsement for secondary ed, so history major with a social studies concentration, starting in the fall, we are decreasing the credits of that by 12 credits, that's huge. We've found three courses that are no longer needed based on the state certification and the direction that the state is going with social studies. And we were able to eliminate three courses that students coming in in the fall uh, will no longer need to take for that, for that endorsement. So I think that makes us more competitive um, in the market for that social studies. Also not on here, but um, linguistics, our linguistics major has also made a change. They've decreased their foreign language requirement from two years down to one. So I'm not sure what other linguistics departments are doing um, across the state, but I wanted to make sure you were aware of that change. And then I've just noted here <clears throat> as a reminder, um, we have several programs that offer a four plus one if, if students are interested in going on to a master's degree. So we saw the psychology one on the majors tab. We also have um, English and communications. So we have several programs where they can um, start planning from their time at the community college, really on that four-year plan, how they can progress all the way through completing a master's degree. And then we have uh, many majors, and I think I talked about that last year, um, that now can do the three plus three. So they could do three years at OU and then the three years of law school to get that um, bachelor's plus their law degree. And these are all listed on our website. So just a reminder that as students are looking for kind of that long-term goal, using those four-year plans on our website to really help them plan that out all the way from the very beginning. So um, I'm not sure how unique this is, but the College of Arts and Sciences, the bulk of our majors are direct admission. Um, there's no additional requirements. You know, if you want to be a psychology major, you just select it on the application. There's no additional um, work that you need to do or process that you have to go through. We have a handful of majors that do require some additional um, work. School of Music, Theater, and Dance does require an admission audition. So they have to audition right at the front end um, to be accepted into the pre-majors. And all of that information is on their website. It gives very detailed information about what's expected at that audition and when those auditions occur. And then we have majors that have major standing. So at some point along the way, they have to um, meet some criteria it might be a minimum grade. It might be a grade point average across multiple courses. It may include some additional letters of recommendation or um, documentation of experience. And that's all detailed on all of the websites. Um, but basically music theater and dance has both a pre-audition and then a major standing. Uh, biomedical sciences is a GPA combined of classes. Um, they include transfer in that, they include AP or IB, all of that gets included into that admission process for a major standing. Social work, <clears throat> excuse me, is um, both coursework, minimum grades, plus submission of hours and letters. Um, public relations and strategic communication, which is a major that we just added a few years ago, is also minimum grades and courses. And then our secondary teacher program is a, um, again, another a little bit longer process. It's both coursework, minimum grades, plus submission of um, exams and letters of recommendation. So these are the only programs within the college that have a, a major standing. If they're not listed here, then they're a direct admit program. We are happy to meet with prospective students um, at any time. You know, if, if they're coming in and they're meeting with you in year one and they want to explore 
kind of what that would look like at Oakland, we are happy to meet with them. Um, we are currently, I would imagine like everybody else, doing remote appointments, um, which sometimes makes it much easier. They don't have to drive all the way over to us. So please direct them to us at any time. Uh, we're happy to go through the programs with the students and, and help them kind of figure out what is going to be ideal um, to take at the community college and, and what they can take uh, when they get to us. We also work, um, you know, Matt kind of said, they, they've changed the residency requirement, which is great. You know, we're constantly talking to students about, you know, these are the credits that you need. Here's what has to be at OU and helping them kind of go back and determine what they could still take at the community college, whether it's over the summer or um, when they get to the end, sometimes they need free elective or some gen ed and we're sending them back as an option to the community college also. So our contact information is here. I wanna say one thing <clears throat> that I like to remind everybody every year, we have advisors available. If a student is sitting in front of you and you need an answer from us, please call our direct line, which is the 4567. We will get an advisor for you so that we can give you an answer while that student is in front of you. We really wanna make sure that we're getting that correct information and that they have what they need to, to make decisions and move forward, so thank you. Now, please join me in welcoming our Bachelors of Integrated Studies team to chat a little bit more about that with you. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Sarah Jehemiak, and I'm with my colleague, Lindsay Zeig. We're happy to speak with you today about one of the gems at Open University for transfer students called the Bachelor of Integrative Studies. I'm going to have my colleague introduce herself to you and get us started. Hello, everyone. My name is Lindsay Zeig, and um, I've been with this department for about eight and a half years, and I'm really happy to um, be here with you all today. So the Bachelor of Integrative Studies is a degree at Oakland University where students are able to design their degree based on their specific career goals. And so this provides students with a lot of flexibility um, and also allows us to take in and apply all of their transfer work. Um, so the ideal candidate is any student who is looking to maximize their transfer credits and a student who is interested in an interdisciplinary experience. So looking to take classes from across campus in more than one discipline area. And one thing that we found that our students really benefit from with our program is the ability to talk about that with future employers and how they gain skills in multiple areas, which makes them really uniquely qualified for their career fields. Um, one thing that we are really proud of and where a lot of our students really benefit from are our transfer articulation agreements. And so we currently have seven articulation agreements with local community colleges. We're constantly adding to that list. And so if you are sitting out there and you're interested in creating an articulation agreement with us, let us know. So um, it really helps students because it allows them to transfer in courses that wouldn't typically transfer in. So as Matt mentioned earlier, the amount of transfer credits is unlimited at this point. However, there are certain areas where courses are typically not equivalent to OU courses and our articulation agreement um, makes those courses able to transfer in. And so some examples of that are courses um, that are more technical courses like PTA, culinary arts, welding, fire science, police academy. Um, we have a lot of students who have associate degrees in those fields and we are able to transfer in those credits so that they can complete a four-year degree. Um, the other golden nugget with this is that they have a decreased residency requirement. So students who are participating in this articulation agreement only need to complete 32 credits at OU rather than the 45 credits. And so what it really breaks down to is that they can do 88 credits at the community college and then do 32 credits here at OU. And so most often what we see students doing is treating it as a three plus one. So they'll do three years at their community college and then their last year at OU. Now, a couple of things with that, we need to make sure that we catch them early so that we can get their plan of study approved beforehand um, so that every single one of those credits counts. So the advisors in our office are really strategic and um, super easy to work with. And we help students to make sure that all of those 32 credits that they take are upper level so that they can also meet our upper level requirement. 
So really what that means is that we need to have really good communication, meet with the students early on. It's not uncommon for me to meet with a student for two years before they actually transfer into the university. So, um, so send them over to us early. We definitely wanna see them um, very early the semester before they transfer in. So as Lindsay mentioned, and we heard from Matt earlier that um, our new residency requirement is the 45 credits. So if your school does not have an articulation with us, that's no problem. Um, obviously the 88 credits would be too many to take at the community college. And so we would want those students to plan on about 75 credits. But of course we have an in with Matt Zeig that we can work with you to get an articulation um, if your school is interested in pursuing that. So again, any associate's degree will count with us. Um, and again, we want students kind of leaning towards about that 75 credit max at the community college because our students in BIS are competing with 120 credits um, for their bachelor's degree. Now, again, working with this, um, if your student is working on a program that isn't really with the transfer credits, like maybe the fire science or the culinary that wouldn't transfer to a, a normal four-year degree, then we wanna make sure that they're for sure getting that um, associate's degree stamp. A few points of pride for our office is that we are the most flexible option for transfer students. That's coming from the community college that might be coming from another university. All of the credits are gonna apply. And as you know that you've been working with students that might be right out of high school, these students maybe want to explore a little bit. And so maybe they're not necessarily following that four-year degree plan to the T right away. They want to check out a couple of different areas for careers. But still, as Lindsay mentioned, those skills that they're learning are going to be applicable to their, their chosen career at some point. And so we want to make sure that those credits are counting for those students and they will through a BIS degree. Our office also works quite a bit with Michigan Works folks. And the great thing about this is that Again, depending on the total number of credits that they have, our students can complete a degree in two years or less. And of course, if they're already holding that associate's degree, it's gonna be expediting that for them that much quicker if they're with one of our articulation schools. Uh, the last count through our career services office, our students had a 90% placement rate, either into a career uh, graduate school, anything like that. Um, and we're really proud of, of what our students are doing in all areas of careers. All right, so we wanted to talk about our law school three plus one program. This is an area of great interest and we've seen a lot of success from students here. Um, so we have agreements with Wayne State Law and Detroit Mercy Law. Um, and so really the idea is that students can finish their bachelor's degree and their law degree in a total of six years. And so they make this happen by double counting their senior year at OU with their first year of law school. So clearly this is for our very high achieving students. Um, and so they definitely need to have a high GPA. They need to have at least a 3.4 GPA to even be considered. Um, and everything is expedited. So rather than taking their LSAT the summer between their junior year and senior year, they take it between their sophomore year and their junior year. So um, everything speeds up a little bit. So for the community college students, what we typically suggest for those students who are interested in um, applying for our Law 3 plus 3 program is to transfer to OU after their first year um, at the community college. So with that, then we can get them at OU a little bit sooner um, and have them take the upper level classes that they need. And then they will be ready to take the LSAT between their um, second and third year so that they're ready to apply at the start of their third year. Um, because if they're admitted, they're going to start law school their fourth year. So it's an incredible opportunity. We have seen students that come from the community college and follow that plan, and they've done really well. One thing to note is that the GPA is recalculated based on all of their grades. So that's gonna include their GPA from the community college and OU. So most often students come and they start over with a fresh GPA at OU, but the law school is going to recalculate their GPA based on everything they've taken. So if you can give them that little warning early on, that will help them to stay motivated and do really well in their courses. So we wanted to share some of our students. We are so proud of, of our BIS students and alumni, and um, it really helps to put a face with a name. So here's one of our current students. She has not graduated yet. This is Sierra, and she is a perfect example of one of our articulation agreement students. So she came to us with, a, with an associate degree in culinary arts from Macomb Community College, and um, I worked with her to complete her, so that she could complete her MTA requirement and transfer in. She actually transferred 
been in, I think, with a few more than 88 credits, but we were able to use all 88. And um, then she created her plan of study with us to have a focus in public relations so that she could go on to be an event planner. And so it's just a really beautiful example of how she's using her past coursework and her current slash future coursework to create her dream job, her dream degree. So she wants to really use her background in culinary arts and food and really apply that to um, event planning since food and um, hospitality is such a big part of large events. So that's a great example of one of our students. And then here's another example. This is, uh, these are two of our law students and they actually just passed the bar exam last February. So about a, just almost a year ago. This is Megan and Alana. And um, these two students, they grew up being best friends and they went through the program, um, taking every single class together. And then they also went, went through law school together too. So it's kind of just a beautiful um, story of friendship too. But these students were so motivated that they expedited things and they actually completed their integrative studies degree in just two years rather than three by doing um, summer classes and doing a few extra credits during the semester. And then um, just in their, their nature, they also expedited their law degree to take summer classes and finish that in two and a half years rather than three. So all together, um, both of these students were able to complete their, their bachelor's degree and their law degree in just four and a half years. Um, so great story of motivation and drive. And I'd like to introduce you to my student, Bianca. I first met Bianca last summer as she was finishing up her credits at Schoolcraft. She came in with exactly 88 to start our program this fall, and she'll be finishing this semester with her Bachelor of Integrative Studies. Uh, throughout the process, she completed all of her nursing prerequisites, also a minor in sociology, and she was just admitted to the University of Detroit Mercy's Master's in Nursing. So she will complete her master's degree and her nursing degree all in one starting at um, Detroit Mercy. So we do have um, an admissions process. Um, we're not, um, we don't have requirements on or limits on that the students are gonna be getting it. So if our students wanna complete a BIS degree, yes, you can go ahead and do that. But it's gonna be important that you're letting your students know exactly when to come and talk with us. And as Lindsay mentioned, we wanna see you early and we wanna see you often to make sure that you're meeting those milestones, you're hitting MTA, et cetera. Um, but we do have five application deadlines per year and all of our students come in as pre-major standing um, before the application process. The process isn't super long, but we wanna obviously help the student pick out their courses just because we don't have a four-year plan that students are completing. So we assist students in com uh, completing their courses. They complete a rationale to talk with our faculty council about why they're selecting their courses, how they're useful for their future career goals or graduate school. Um, and then we actually have our students meet with a faculty mentor that's an expert in their career field. And so in order to do that, uh, again, we wanna meet with that student uh, 2.0 GPA in order to get into our program and then also to reach major standing and graduate. And as Lindsay mentioned, also the students that are pursuing our law area, we definitely want to see them a lot earlier than that um, 88 credits and probably just after the end of their first year. Uh, but please come early and come often um, so that we can make sure that our students are on the right foot. And here's our content information for both Lindsay and I here, our email address and also our main office. Uh, we are checking uh, email and obviously we're doing our um, office phone number remotely right now since we're all working from home. But again, we do want to see prospective students and we're happy to talk with them to make sure that they're going to be setting up whatever they need from the community college and getting right started when they enter OU and hit the ground running. So we're, again, we're happy to talk to you anytime. So please, please give us a call and please check out our website for any further information. And now I would like to welcome the Director of Advising for the School of Education and Human Services to talk about that school with you all. Um, some of our points of pride is that we have a lot of students working in our local school district. So as our students graduate and finish up their student teaching, they're receiving jobs um, at our local school districts, which include Chippewa Valley, Rochester Community Schools, Troy School District, Avondale, Utica. The Michigan Department of Education tracks this information and shares it back with the university. And every year we're so excited to see those numbers go up of our graduates receiving jobs and local communities. So a common question that I get asked is how many of our graduates are getting jobs. And from the MDE report, we know that from the 2015 to 2017 timeframe, um, 338 of our graduates have been hired in traditional public schools 
and 159 in charter schools. We also have students that go off and work in private schools or out of state and that um, information isn't tracked by the MDE, but our students are leaving and walking into teaching roles, which is very exciting um, and certainly a change that we've experienced over the past five to 10 years. All right, so big changes in our elementary education degree. We've been alluding to them over the past couple years. Um, but the, for fall 2021, our program is going to start and be open for the new elementary education certificate structure. At Oakland University, our program will prepare teachers to lead classrooms in grades pre-K through, uh, through six um, in all the subject areas. So the grade bands under the new structure are pre-K three and three six, and our students will um, take a dual grade level um, part preparation as a part of our program. So one of the major changes in terms of how we'll work with these students and the transfer guys at the community college is that students will no longer choose a core subject area of language arts or math or science or social studies. We're gonna train all of our future educators in more language arts classes, more math classes, more science and more so social studies. We want them equally well prepared in all four of those core subject areas for grades um, pre-K all the way through sixth grade. So we've updated those transfer guides um, to reflect that information accordingly. Um, also of super exciting um, news with the elementary education program is that we've cut the credits way back. Students can graduate in as little as 120 credits from our elementary education program, um, whereas previously the number was higher than that. So we're excited um, to help students graduate in a more timely manner um, and in a more planned and purposeful manner. Shannon earlier touched on the secondary education program, but also wanted to just highlight that currently they're working on rebuilding those programs and they should be around in fall 2023. So if you're working with students planning to transition in fall 21 or fall 22, um, currently the major options that they can select are going to be the sciences, which are biology, chemistry, or physics. They can choose math. English, history, or the world languages. There's a big need in Michigan now for middle school and high school science and math teachers. And so if you're having students come to you looking for um, suggestions or options, um, we always like to encourage folks that are talented in science and math, um, if they have an interest in teaching to pursue that as a career option. And then alongside the majors, um, our students in high school can at the science can be prepared in integrated science, which allow them to teach all of the sciences. They can also choose social studies, which allow them to teach um, those social sciences um, classes like econ, American government, world history, so on and so forth. And our students can choose minors in any of the major subject areas, but additionally, they could minor in Chinese, economics, English as a second language, and political science. Our English as a second language minor is growing in popularity um, because there are, is a desire for teachers to have that ability to work with students whose native language is not English. For our K-12 education programs, we have programs in art education and music education. And two quick points of pride with those is that most of our art teachers have secured employment by the time they're graduating. Um, so there is a need for art teachers in the state of Michigan and Oakland University prepares more art teachers than any other institution. And for our K-12 music education, it's an exceptional program. Um, last time we ran the numbers, the, there was a 100% pass rate on the music education test for teacher certification. So Oakland does a great job preparing our music educators. Um, our early childhood education program is still in the process of being built. Um, the state is just released standards over the past few months. And so we have a team of folks working on what that program will look like. In the meantime, we will teach out the early childhood program under the current existing structure for students. Um, so our early childhood program will span birth to K. And so that's a change that used to just focus on preschool and early elementary. Um, so it's a whole Whole new grade band that the Michigan Department of Education has rolled out um, and there there's going to be a focus on child development, relationship building, as well as some of those early skills in math, reading, science, and social studies kind of conceptualization. 
All right, so for uh, criteria for admission to be considered a pre-elementary education student, uh, students just need to come to Oakland University and they'll be considered pre-elementary education. And at the time of major standing, we're looking for those students to establish a 2.8 cumulative GPA. Um, to be enrolled in our intro to education class, which is EED 2000 or 2001, and have a C or um, better in the intermediate algebra class. Um, our program for the elementary education is offered on the main campus in Rochester, Michigan, as well as at the Macomb University Center. Um, and so we attract students from anywhere east of campus to the Macomb University Center. Um, to take their classes there. It's a tight knit group um, between 15 and 25 students each year take all their classes together. And another helpful thing to note is that no professional education classes will be transferred from the community college. So we'll take all the gen eds, we'll take all those pre-major classes, um, but anything that is a teaching methods class would just come from the university level. And students will have field placements every semester that they're enrolled in their education coursework. So starting when they take EED 2000, they'll have a 30 hour field placement. And certainly once they're in their major standing classes. So we're we're not just going to talk about how to teach, we're going to train them um, alongside their experience in the classroom. And then we, um, to foster some of this work, we have partnerships with Avondale and Pontiac and Troy. Each year we've been offering our reading classes right from those elementary schools. So students will drive to locations in Avondale, Pontiac and Troy. They'll learn about how to teach reading and then they'll connect with students during their class period to practice those skills and come back together and reflect on, okay, what went according to this plan? What didn't go according to this plan? And how would I work with students in real life? Life moving forward. So we think that's an exceptional opportunity that Oakland University students have to take their coursework in local elementary schools. All right, our next and um, major to talk about is human resource development. It's a little lesser known than our education programs, but we're very proud of our human resource development program. Um, the faculty have taken strides to make it more transfer friendly and have developed articulation agreements with Macomb Community College and Oakland Community College. They also, within the past couple of years, reduced the internship from eight credits to four credits, allowing our students to graduate with only 120 credits instead of 124. Um, so some of our top HRD hiring companies would be Forisia, Quicken Loans, Beaumont, and McLean Fogg. We have a lot of automotive suppliers and defense industry um, folks hiring our HRD graduates additionally. When we go um, for recruiting with the career services, the HR students from the School of Business work alongside the HRD students from the School of Education. We do joint recruiting initiatives together. Our criteria for admission is going to be a 2.0 overall GPA for the pre-major standing. Um, and then at major standing, we just ask that they meet with their advisor and have a signed program plan and that they've completed um, at least 40 credits. So each of the HRD core classes needs to have a C or higher um, in order to be counted in the degree. And we also offer um, the HRD program in its entirety in Macomb County. We have a full-time advisor in Macomb County. Her name is Lori Shano, um, and she works really closely with students that are following the program there. Our students can use the MTA to complete the HRD program um, as well, and so that's a very safe option for students pursuing HRD. Um, HRD undergraduate coursework can't be transferred from the community colleges, but we take the general education as well as the elective credits towards the degree. Um, we ask that students follow their transfer guides, and um, just another reminder that we have those articulation agreements in place for Macomb and OCC. Uh, to complement their majors, we offer minors that will help students specialize just a little bit further in specific areas. So we offer minors in lean leadership, applied leadership skills, training and development, as well as employment systems and standards. 
Um, we're here to help you as you're helping your students. And so please never hesitate to contact myself or any of our team of advisors at Oakland. Any of us are more than happy to um, work with you. Um, we're, we're all pretty good at getting back to email very quickly. And so that would be the most efficient way to get in touch with us while we're working remotely during this time. Um, and if we will always meet with students, we'll meet with prospective students that are currently enrolled at the community college, prospective students that aren't yet enrolled at the community college, we'll meet with anyone that wants to talk about any of our degrees at any point in time. And the best way that students can do that um, is to call or email our front desk to get an appointment, or if they want to work with Lori directly, um, her email address is listed on the screen as well. All right, thank you for taking the time to listen to our updates from the School of Education and Human Services. Thanks for having me here today.